The Pope in the Vatican City recently made headlines when the Pope released two dubs of peace in commemoration of the Holocaust. Now this in and of itself would have been enough to make headlines in many newspapers around the globe. But there was something that happened that has garnered greater attention for this story. It has to do with the fact that upon their release one of the two dubs was attacked by a seagull. A seagull tried to make quick work of this dove of peace. So now there are many Christians who are pointing to this as a sign from God that his wrath will soon be poured out upon Vatican City and upon the Catholic Church. The reason being, there are those Christians who believe the Catholic Church is actually the great prostitute and the city of Babylon that is mentioned in the book of Revelation in chapters 17 and 18. And if you believe as I do that this is the case, that the Catholic Church is in fact the great prostitute and the city of Babylon, then we can look to this as a sign from God that peace, the relative peace that the world is now enjoying is soon to come to an end. That we are very soon going to be entering the period known as the Great Tribulation. Now, to explain why I believe this is the case, I'm going to look at the book of Revelation. I'm not going to have time to read all of chapter 17 and 18 so I'm going to be reading uh, a number of passages and then explaining why this pertains to the Catholic Church. Before I read from the book of Revelation I'm first going to read from a book called The Conflict of Adam and Eve with Satan. Now just to explain a bit about the passage I'm going to be reading from it has to do with a time when the children of Cain are being used by Satan to entice the children of Seth off of the holy mountain. Now he has tried a couple things uh, up to this point. He has taught the children of Cain to make and to play musical instruments and the music grabs the attention of the children of Seth and some of them do come off of the mountain and join the descendants of Cain. But there are some who remain up top, they refuse to come down but Satan uses a, another tactic to entice them and it's this that I'd like to speak to. It reads, But when the children of Seth heard the noise, they wandered and came by companies and stood on the top of the mountain to look at those below, and they did thus a whole year. When at the end of that year Genyan saw that they were being won over to him little by little, Satan entered into him and taught him how to make dyeing stuffs for garments of diverse patterns and made him understand how to dye crimson and purple and what not. And the sons of Cain who wrought all this and shone in beauty and gorgeous apparel gathered together at the foot of the mountain in splendor with horns and gorgeous dresses and horse races committing all manner of abominations. So we see here that the way Satan was able to entice the children off of the holy mountain was with music and gorgeous apparel and the colors specifically mentioned are crimson and purple. Now having explained that I'd like to read from the book of Revelation using the New Living Translation beginning with chapter 17 verse 2. The kings of the world have committed adultery with her and the people who belong to this world have been made drunk by the wine of her immorality. So the angel took me in the spirit into the wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that had seven heads and ten horns, and blasphemies against God were written all over it. The woman wore purple and scarlet clothing and beautiful jewelry made of gold and precious gems and pearls. In her hand she held a gold goblet full of obscenities and the impurities of her immorality. A mysterious name was written on her forehead, Babylon the Great, mother of all prostitutes and obscenities in the world. I could see that she was drunk, drunk with the blood of God's holy people who were witnesses for Jesus. I stared at her in complete amazement. Why are you so amazed? the angel asked. I will tell you the mystery of this woman and of the beast with seven heads and ten horns on which she sits. This calls for a mind with understanding. The seven heads of the beast represent the seven hills where the woman rules. They also represent seven kings. Five kings have already fallen. The sixth now reigns, and the seventh is yet to come. But this reign will be brief. The scarlet beast that was but is no longer is the eighth king. 
He is like the other seven, and he too is headed for destruction. The ten horns of the beast are ten kings who have not yet risen to power. Then the angel said to me, The waters where the prostitute is ruling represent masses of people of every nation and language. The scarlet beast and his ten horns all hate the prostitute. They will strip her naked, eat her flesh, and burn her remains with fire. For God has put a plan into their minds, a plan that will carry out his purposes. They will agree to give their authority to the scarlet beast, and so the words of God will be fulfilled. And the woman you saw in your vision represents the great city that rules over the kings of the world. Do to her as she has done to others, double her penalty for all her evil deeds. She brewed a cup of terror for others, so brew twice as much for her. She glorified herself and lived in luxury, so match it now with torment and sorrow. She boasted in her heart, I am queen on my throne, I am no helpless widow, and I have no reason to mourn. And the kings of the world who committed adultery with her and enjoyed her great luxury will mourn for her as they see the smoke rising from her charred remains. They will stand at a distance, terrified by her great torment. The merchants of the world will weep and mourn for her, for there is no one left to buy their goods. She bought great quantities of gold, silver, jewels, and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet cloth. Things made of fragrant thion, wood, ivory goods, and objects made of expensive wood, and bronze, iron, and marble. She also bought cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, and frankincense, wine, olive oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, sheep, horses, chariots, and bodies, that is, human slaves. How terrible, how terrible for that great city. She was clothed in finest purple and scarlet linens, decked out with gold and precious stones and pearls. In a single moment, all the wealth of the city is gone. In your streets flowed the blood of the prophets and of God's holy people, and the blood of people slaughtered all over the world. I stated earlier in this video that the seagull that attacked the dove of peace was a sign from God that we are soon to enter the period known as the Great Tribulation and that the seagull attacking the dove of peace is a sign that God is unhappy with the Vatican. But I need to qualify that statement because God was really only indirectly involved. The one who was really directly involved is Satan. I say this because the seagull attacking the dove of peace is a sign that a covenant has been broken. But I'm not talking about a covenant that was made with God, but rather one that was made between the beast and the great prostitute a little more than 1,200 years ago. And in my next video, I'll go into greater detail as to the meaning of this. For now, I'll simply say that the beast is uh, pretty upset with the Vatican right now. The beast thought it had an agreement, that it had a partnership with 
the Vatican with the great prostitute. But the beast has become unhappy with the actions of the Vatican. I say this because of the day that this took place. The day that these doves were released was a day that was in remembrance of and commemorating, if you will, the survivors and the victims of the Holocaust. So the Vatican released these doves, doves of peace, in remembrance of what the Jews went through. But the beast is the one that was behind the Holocaust. The beast perpetrated those acts. The beast is the one who tried to exterminate the Jews. And so the beast, seeing this, takes it as an insult. The Vatican, who is the great prostitute and also the city of Babylon, has now insulted the one that it had a covenant with, that being the old uh, Holy Roman Empire. That's the covenant that was made a little more than 1,200 years ago, a covenant and a partnership between the Scarlet Beast and the great prostitute. But in saying these things about the Holocaust, in condemning Hitler and the old Germany, the old Holy Roman Empire, the Vatican it has now made itself an enemy of the one it once had a covenant with. So now we are going to see greater animosity grow between the beast and the prostitute until it will reach a point when the beast, who is the Holy Roman Empire, and all uh, of its affiliates, all of those people who come together uh, to form an alliance, that Holy Roman Empire is going to lay waste to the great prostitute, is going to lay waste to the city of Babylon, which is the Vatican. All right, uh, that's about all I have time for in this video. In the next one, I'm going to go into greater detail as to why I say modern Germany is the, the Scarlet Beast. But I'm going to be looking at more than just the book of Revelation. I'm also going to be looking at the book of Daniel and, and the statue that he describes from his vision. Also, I'm going to be looking at the war scrolls that make up part of the Dead Sea Scrolls and look at uh, a prophecy that has to do with a 40-year war. But then I'm also going to look at another prophecy that few people are aware of. It's found in 2nd Esdras and it has to do with a prophecy of end times having to do with a three-headed eagle. I hope you will join me for that video for it will really lay out uh, the prophecies as we find them in Scripture and clearly identify who the beast is and what we must be looking for. Till next time, peace and blessings.